the moon. That's, oh gosh. <laughs> oh, talk a bit, Pete, so I can see if you're... Talky, talky, yep. am I okay? Yep. Good. Oh, chatty. I think Bueno will be back tonight. I think he will be. So that's cool. Uh, I don't know if you saw, but he will be joining us for Game of the Year. I did. I did. He's going to be thrilled to death. Well, I think he is thrilled to death. <laughs> he is. I was going to say, yeah, it's I in missed. the... Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, it would help if I actually opened Twitch so I could keep an eye on the chat. Yeah, I'd probably do yeah. that because my battery's going to die. I love the fact that you've just called it on the Twitch Genu, G News. Yeah. Genu. <laughs> Genu's. It's almost like you couldn't be bothered. <laughs> no, I was thinking, what's what's a, a pairing of letters that sound like N and all I could think was G-N, which can either go g -n or N, so... Really yeah, nice to like say news. Gnocchi. Yes, exactly. Exactly that. Yeah. Oh, I need to find a so, switch. So, Pete, are you going to be cheering when England makes goals or whatever they're called? No. I don't know anything about football. Uh, you mean when they score. Okay. You're not going to no. be like... No, I am not. Yay! <laughs> no, I am not. Uh, I like my football, but I'm, I, I couldn't care less about the England national team, if I'm honest. Really? Is it different? Yeah. Is it? Okay, I have to know this, even though I really am not a football fan. Apologies to our listeners, viewers who are not in yet. Um, is it made up of, like, like the, the other teams? Is it kind of like the Olympics, where they get people from the other teams and make one big team? Pretty much, yeah. So, oh! Uh, essentially, what will happen is that uh, players from each nationality will get selected by their, their country for a major competition or friendlies or whatever. Right. And they are made up of players from all across the world, wherever they play their football. So, right. uh, for example, most of England's players all play in England. Right. Uh, apart from a couple, who one of them plays out of Germany. Mm. But the German national squad, for example, there are quite a few players who play over in England. Mm-hmm. For their normal club football. Right. So right. it's a bit strange. And to be fair, most of the Americans play their, their football over in Europe. Ah, oh, right. Well, that kind of makes sense. It does, because Europe is a lot stronger when it comes to football than the, uh, the yeah. Americas, let's say. We're not big on football. I'm glad you're calling it the proper name. Well, I'm only doing that for you, because it's really soccer. It's not soccer. Get gaffed. Uh-huh. But Look, I, I don't understand. If we want to go down this line, I don't know why Americans okay. feel the need to call American football football. Because they barely kick the ball. I know, it's true. I mean, it is just rugby light. I do like rugby now. Rugby's fun. I want to play rugby. Like, I think oh, I would be, be fantastic so good. Rugby. I really think I would. Um, find a, I'm, I'm sure there's I, quite there a few is. lady seats. Go find one. I, I'm actually thinking after I lose this next round of weight, because I've already lost, like, my first set of weight. <laughs> uh -huh. So after I lose this next chunk, um, and my, my, like, running and stuff should be improved, I'm going to yeah, go well, try out for the It requires you team. to do cardio, so that might exactly. be the biggest doubtful. But I'm so big and strong, I might not have to do much cardio. <laughs> No, you will, because the po <laughs> what is the common misconception is how massive the people are that do rugby. Oh, oh they're no, so they're massive. incredibly fit. Oh, I know, because my new trainer is a I know. professional <laughs> rugby player. Um, I know, but I just thought I'd let but you know like that they are incredibly big. fit. Yeah, yeah, I know, I'm like... <laughs> it's not like <laughs> yeah, they're dying. players. No. Like roided yeah. up half the time, and then go up, then then have a difference between offense and defense. So I did play American football as a kid. Um, so did I actually. Oh right, um, but yeah. they didn't allow us to tackle. I don't know yeah, that's how it was over here. Wicked flag football. Yes, so it was flag. Oh, I hate flag football. Flag football but, sucks. <laughs> but see, I was so good because this is how I do. This is how I do every sport. My arms are so long. So long. I didn't even have to move. And, oh, uh, yeah. So you, you could get tackled that way quite Yeah, easy. I just reach over and grab it. Oh, I'm the coach being so mad. So mad. Like, why do you keep running next to her? <laughs> it's 
just because I've got really long go-go gadget arms, and uh, I didn't have to run it all. I'd be said it that way. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I only, like, technically I only did American football myself because my history teacher was American. Oh, right. And <laughs> rather than being, you know, being a thing for the PE teachers, he was oh, like, Oh, like, yeah. Can I, can I do an American football club? And they yeah. went, yeah, go ahead. Aww. And had barely any other people getting involved. And That's... I was one of them. Yeah. Sports. Turns out I'm not a bad quarterback. I I bet, yeah. Holy crap, yeah. yeah. I guess because I've got a good eye for eye for plays, mm -hmm. yes, and I can yeah. throw. Exactly, that's that's what you need, you know. Oh man, see, that's the disappointing thing. I've said this before on the show, which is sports over here in the UK. Um, it's just not pushed as hard as it is in the US. And in I think what way? Like we have sport. Well, being that I'm from Texas, we have sports pushed on us from like three years old. All the way through high school, because we have, you know, co-teams, or, or not co-teams, what do you call it? Ah, mixed genders, whatever. Because, uh, like, over here, the basketball for chicks is co -ed, called... you mean. Yeah, co-ed, thank you. Um, but basketball over here is called, I don't remember, handball something. It's weird. Like basketball? No, they don't have basketball. Here in Northern Ireland, they play something else. Oh, the uh, girls. yeah, they have handball. I think it's handball. I don't remember what it's called. Yeah, GAA. Okay, yeah, they just stand there, and they don't move, and they just... Or hurling. No, because it's with the basketball and, like, a net and everything. But I don't think the net has a hole in netball. it or something. Netball, that's it. Yeah, we play netball over here as well, but, like, yeah, we do actually have, um... We have basketball over here. Oh, my gosh. They only have basketball for males here, and even then it's not pushed that hard because, let's be honest, it's Ireland. No one's over 5'2". <laughs> I mean, it's just a truth. Yeah, you'd be surprised if anyone could dunk the ball. Oh, gosh. I, there's, I don't think anyone on the entire island of Ireland, negative to the entire island of Ireland, can nah. dunk a basketball. Um, nope. It's, they say white men can't dunk, but we're Irish men definitely oh, can't. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I make it very clear. I love dudes under five ten. That's my preference. Uh, but they're not uh, the strongest at ball sports. Oh, that sounds bad. They're not the strongest <laughs> at at sports involving that sort of thing. <laughs> what a time to do a test recording! Oh gosh! Oh dear! That's going to haunt me, isn't it? <laughs> no. Surprisingly enough, I do delete the test recording oh, afterwards. So, look, if you <laughs> yeah. screw up on the show, I can't help that. You like you did the other week where you decided to randomly say balls. No, I said cock because the cock That's industry. That's the one, yeah, sorry. Yeah, because I it was still... co-media co or cock, oh, no. cock media, yeah. That oh, was so funny, Joe. Well, Sincho. Oh, howdy, Sincho. Well, welcome. Oh, bro, bueno as well. Bueno, is oh, it? Yeah, yeah, I'm glad you said that, Sincho. Can't delete the memory of it. And I'd rather not either. Hashtag ball sports. <laughs> but I will tell you what Irish folksies are good at. And I'm Drinking. all Ireland. Uh, which is A, you know, yes, G-A-A. -A, they're very good at that. Um, but um, uh, gymnastics type. CrossFit stuff and runners. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, the amount of runners that are here, and the running yeah, clubs and the runners. marathons, and it's just like you know, hey, more power to you. We miss you, Bueno. We uh, did. We we missed your your chattiness in the chat. Yeah, the chat chatty. Yeah, <laughs> that. <laughs> right. Pete I said. will be back in a mojo. <laughs> Hang on. I've got to go check this recording. All right. But all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Um, so uh, we're discussing the fact that England is playing football right now, and I don't know anything about football because it's not my thing. Um, it's a sport where you have to run. I don't play sports; you have to run. I do play basketball, but I'm so tall and have such long arms. When I play against other ladies, I don't have to move very far. <laughs> Ah, uh, and then Derby. I want to. I, I want to get back in Derby, but our Derby team has has dropped down to very few people after a lockdown, which is sad because we had a really strong team. But I think I'm gonna join rugby next. Rugby. Yes, 
Yes, that's what uh, the one of my roommates said. They're called rugger buggers, which sounded a little bit naughty to me. <laughs> uh, I mean, have you ever heard about male bonding in sports? Oh dear! <laughs> oh dear! <laughs> well, there you go. The rugby boys are quite like the, intense. The Spartans. My <sighs> um, no, my um, my cousin, um, middle cousin. He's um, he's an ex rugby player. All right. And they used to go out on socials all the time oh really all the time oh goodness like if there was a weekend where he wasn't drunk it was a worry see i'm a perfect fit i need to join that's what i'm doing next year Ready there you go it is. you need to do it get involved oh yeah uh, and also i've already warned kylie about this but full disclosure for you uh <laughs> on the interwebs uh, i have got the football on on my phone whilst we're recording so England are playing. I don't really care, but I have to have it on because of national support, of course. Did you did you place bets? Bets? Yeah. Like, did you, you put mean? money on the game? No. Oh. Never. Right. I worked as a bookie. I know the betting. Oh, that's game. right. You did, didn't you? <laughs> I did. Betting is a complete mugs game. Like, yeah. I know that, that there is never there is never a broke bookie. Right, exactly. Ooh. And if you're a broke bookie, then you're a terrible one. Yeah, I should be a bookie. <laughs> Don't. You will lose all your capital. Oh my gosh. I could do. I could be stop. one of those, like, underground loan sharky ones. Like, I'll break your legs. <laughs> do you really see yourself walking up to someone's house with a baseball bag? Oh, I'll break your legs! <laughs> Maybe not here in Northern Ireland, because that's the no, wrong No, because place. they'll probably turn around and say, <laughs> exactly. I don't care, I'll give you a slap. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Come over to Percy England, you know. Oh, we'll, we'll gladly, like, especially over in London. There's a lot of soy <laughs> boys there. Oh, I love soy boys. <laughs> but, um, I don't know why I'm really feisty today. I should uh, probably not have been around kids this afternoon because they're all nuts. Uh, it was my niece's birthday party. Just, oh, that's like, right. Mental. Yeah. They're all mental. Well, I can't do it. But. I mean, I mean you can barely handle people for an hour. I was gonna say, I, I really can't. Like, the weird thing is, kids love me. Oh, yeah, like yesterday. So I went to the pharmacy to go pick up uh, a prescription. And mm -hmm. I'm, as I was saying earlier, I'm really tall. I'm six foot tall, which doesn't sound tall, but when you live in Ireland, it's very tall. You're like a giant. Yeah, <laughs> which is ironic because their myths and legends are giants. Giants, um, obviously. Exactly. Which is Maybe it was place. made after you. That's it. Well, it goes to <laughs> it goes over to Scotland in the island where my people are from. So anyway, little mythology aside, um, I walked in and this uh, very nice lady with her two very very young children. I don't know because I'm not good at child ages, but three and four. Uh, <laughs> she walked in, and they just kept looking at me like this. <laughs> <laughs> they're staring at me oh, like I was like Barney. Wide, wide eyes. Look. Yeah. Like, oh, play with me, please. Yeah, they're like, wow. <laughs> was just You're so, so tall. I was like, hey, little kid. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, so that's that's why kids like me, because I'm like an amusement feature thing. <laughs> Yeah, look at the tall lady. Exactly. Oh, Cynthia's yeah. commented. I know. I I was gonna. I was waiting for you oh, to finish your story on this yeah. one. So, uh, he said, as a German who does not give a damn about football, <laughs> I'm so glad our team is out already. And... <laughs> uh, Hang on a minute. Mm -hmm. Hang on. <laughs> Sorry, Germany. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Being oh old my. rivals and everything, it was quite nice to see them go out early. Oh, goodness. I have no ill will towards the Germans. I like them as a nation. Absolutely. But when it comes to football, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. America went out like yesterday. So There was no, someone, I... someone said, and I'm sorry, this is funny. Uh, no offense to my uh, American brothers and sisters back home, but this was funny. Somebody said... That's the fastest Americans have ever left a Middle Eastern country. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I, yeah. Oh my. Yep. <laughs> yep. I had, yep. <laughs> oh, it's 
That is nice. It was. It was like, yeah. I mean, so accurate. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's that really was, good. Uh, I was like, okay, yeah, you win. You win. Oh, <laughs> no, I'm stealing that. That's my own joke. That's I don't care. Very good. Uh, but I mean, should we get a show on the rice? We should probably do that because we want it to oh, be a, a minute. Oh, I'm gosh. Need to compose myself. Yes. Wow, we were supposed to start like 15 minutes ago. We want to keep it brief. Uh, no, I said half past, so we'll try and aim. Oh. Well, 15 minutes go live. On oh, Sunday. right. And then, okay, so actually, we're on time. You see what I mean? So, we, you know what I mean? We yeah, try yeah, and yeah. get started at half seven. Yeah, so, uh, right, let me go queue up the recording. That's why I needed a moment, because laughing. Yep. Right, okay, so I'm recording, so I'll count you in. Three, two. <laughs> okay, well, Great start. I messed that up. Uh... Uh, you're cutting out, by the way. Couldn't hear you. Okay, uh, I really messed that up. Uh, I went to say welcome and then choked on my air. On just air. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, I thought it was the fact that I put you off with the weird, like, swirling finger there. No, although, yes, you did, and it caused me to go... <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> okay. Reason to watch the Twitch stream. Exactly. Let's try this again. You keep that yeah. in, but let's try this again. <laughs> I'm keeping it in, absolutely. Okay, can we down again? Three, two. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Rapid Reviews Radio, episode 143, the I Love You Show. Uh, I'm your co-host, Kylie Wild, and I'm joined by my ever-present co-host, Pete Beckett. Pete. Okay, that's uh, sung today, I don't know why. Yes. I guess new intros are needed at some point. I'm sweating Hello. to death. <laughs> I mean... I'm not. I'm freezing my bath right now. Uh huh. I, you weren't gonna say but. You were gonna say another word. Uh, <laughs> we'll say ass. <laughs> Arse. Uh, no, but... we're allowed to get away with ass, so that's yeah. what I said. Ass. Oh, okay. Um, no, I'm, even though I'm in a basement and the temperature is rapidly dropping, I'm really warm. I think it's on my equipment. It's just. It must be, yeah, because I'm currently sat on the top floor of my house and it's freezing. I like the heat coming off the genitals of my, <laughs> of my equipment. Hashtag ball sports, as Sancho put. I think hashtag ball sports is the name of this episode. You I think it probably Twitch. is. You should have been over on twitch.tv forward slash rapid reviews. Ra no, rapid reviews. Rapid Daddy. reviews. Wow, this is an episode, isn't it? Uh, Twitch.tv yes. forward slash rapid reviews to find out what that reference is to because I just spent about 30 minutes soliloquizing about sports. <laughs> uh, it wasn't 30 minutes, but it was long enough. Yeah, well, um, I'm not good with time. No, that's fine. It's because I mentioned that we, I was watching the football on my phone. As, oh, as is it? That's what kicked it off? Yes. Oh, kick mm. off. Haha, <laughs> that's a sports ball. <laughs> Very good. Sports ball <laughs> reference. Oh, sports ball. Um, okay, so as you can see, this is a free-for-all episode. This is just, no, this is us. This is us right well, now. I'm, glad, I'm actually <laughs> glad you said free-for-all, because it does pull into one of our, uh... uh yes, it does, uh, doesn't it? From later, yep. It does. Uh, oh yeah, so I forgot my favorite part. Pete, how's your week been? Uh, surprisingly nice, actually, because, uh... I finished work at 11 o'clock on Tuesday after, uh, Tuesday morning no. and had annual leave. Because I worked last weekend, I basically oh. had two days off in lieu and booked a couple of days off of annual leave to make it a longer weekend. So nice. I've played golf. I've been walking three days of those for long periods of time. Mm -hmm. uh, spent the getting um, being a one new up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I told you. I uh, wasn't going to, but then I, uh -huh. oh, okay. I asked Pete, are you going to cheer? <laughs> He's like, no. <laughs> I did. I yep, did. You did. Um, but yeah, uh, <laughs> spent the day with my partner yesterday, and it was a really nice evening Aww. and the morning as well. And went to go uh, see my niece for her birthday tomorrow yeah. as well. So it was quite nice. That's good very week. good. That sounds like what a about you? week. I don't remember because I never remember anything before 24 hours ago. Uh, <laughs> 
I okay. So our uh, our session on Fall Guys the other day was redundant. Oh no, that was fun. I did. I picked up Fall. I okay. So full disclosure to our audience, I've been going through some some tough things, some tough things, uh, and I haven't touched my Xbox or any video games outside of mobile gaming uh, in mm. almost two months now. Wow. Which. Over the course of right. my life, that's probably the longest I've stayed away from console or PC gaming. And yet your Xbox has been constantly on. I know. I come in, I look at it. Of the background. I know. I look at it and I go, <laughs> log in, Kylie. <laughs> and I'm like, no, not today. And then I pick up my iPad and I play games on it. Um, Fair enough. Look. No arguments, you know, if that's not what you, you're not feeling it, you're not feeling that it. That reminds me, Pete, now that we've said that, I meant to run this by you, but I'm just going to do it anyway. Um, so, we're going to Live planning on the show, fantastic. Yeah, woohoo, it's organic. We just develop organically. Um, no, what I want to do is a very, very brief, uh, kind of bring back a little retro. Uh, you got this. We got this. That's right. We oh, changed it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We haven't done these in ages. Uh, no, we haven't. And, and I'm still not sure I'm going to make it a regular thing, but I. Definitely wanted to mention today because um, it just it just needs to be said for people out there that December is very tough for some of you, uh, and for those who don't know, December is very tough for some people, and yeah. that is just a reminder that um, you're not alone at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that everything you feel. As insane and chaotic as it is, and it is, uh, is normal and is valid. And on the other side of it, if you feel nothing, if you're numb and you don't feel nothing, no joys of the Christmas spirit or anything like that, that's okay too. Nothing wrong with that. We nope. all just float through December how we can. <laughs> well, you got to do what you got to do, you know, survive how, how and when you can, you know, mm -hmm. just... If the times are getting on top of you, then trying to trying to fake Christmas spirit is not exactly no. the best way to do things. Don't so do take that. things as they come. Do mm -hmm. what you can. You know, look after yourself. Absolutely. You know, as the days are shorter and you Ugh. know the nights crawl in. You know, those it Ugh. can get very, very, very difficult for some, and I know that because mm -hmm. you've obviously been struggling a lot recently. So yeah. Um, I... but yeah, just take a few moments of pause just to compose yourself and mm -hmm. get together. You know, and realize that. It's all right to not be okay. Absolutely, exactly. Pete hit the nail on the head. It's okay not to be okay. Um, everything you feel is valid, um, and everything you don't feel is valid. Um, and then I did want to mention, which I may mention this again because I know we've got a uh, you know another episode before Crimbo time. Um, yeah. <clears throat> that uh, the comedian uh, Sarah Milliken, um, who who I actually like her. I know. Some people No, don't. she's she is she funny. She is funny. I like her. Uh, I missed her show. It was uh, I think she had one over here in, in uh, Northern Ireland not too long ago. Um, but I missed the, I didn't get tickets in time. But not the, my not my point. She is doing a virtual kind of don't feel alone thing on Christmas Day. That's a good idea. Um, in fact, Pete, what I'll do is I'll send you the kind of addressy info on it. Um, yeah, please it send it to notes. me and I'll post yeah. it in our show notes. Mm -hmm. um, because, I mean, it is, like, I have been there. That Christmas Day hits and there's just nobody there. <laughs> Your house doesn't look any different than it did the day before. You know, and it's just like, wow, do I even exist? Am I human? Uh, so, this is not, this is a perfect opportunity for that. If, you, if you're so inclined. And again, you don't have to do anything. You know, anything you choose to do is perfectly valid and fine. Um, I and mean, if you just decide to spend it in a dark room by yourself, exactly. that is up to you. But just yep. remember, you're there not are alone. People out there who who care mm -hmm. care about you and won't want to see you alone on the holidays. Exactly. Absolutely. Um, in fact, I'm. Send us, send us a message on Discord. I'll happily talk to you for Christmas yeah, Day. Yeah, there you go. Um, <clears throat> so, you know. I think that's going to wrap that little segment up. I don't know. Let us think. Let us know if you want to hear that next year. Because next year, you know, it's we try new things. You know, we all get excited and uh, stuff. Speaking of which, we need to do our big sit down for next year planning at some point. So. I know. I know. 
Um, but... What, what you've just seen there is the look of someone who is going to find an excuse not to do it. <laughs> I saw it in your face. You, don't, you ain't seen nothing. You don't know. Yeah. Um, but, oh, uh, no, I know, I know, it's fine. Um, oh, yeah, so, anyway, that'll wrap that up. And, you know, we got back this. To Woo back to the show. Pete, do you want to read what chat said? Uh, there's not really much in there apart from well, uh, Brent, the chat, yeah, talking that's the about bit, how man. he was on a cruise to the Bahamas last Woo! week. So that was... I'm Shane Wayno. Join us. I get to go on cruises. That... <laughs> oh, that's why you wanted to mention it, just so you could bring that old <laughs> load of old nonsense there. Insulting one of our biggest, <laughs> biggest listeners and watchers and contributors. Supporters, yes. Um, uh, yeah, no, but I you're do... right, though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I do want to go to the Bahamas one day. Yeah, one so do I. day. I was, um, I was close enough with the Caribbean. Yeah, you were. Caribbean. You were, yeah. Like, I've never been anywhere like that. I kind of want to try Spain soon as well. I do Spain's that nice. Year. Depends on where you go, of course, because there's a lot of very heavy tourist destinations. Yeah, sometimes I think I want to go there because I'm traveling by myself. Um, but also, I love adventure and doing crazy things. So, yeah. We'll see. Uh, yeah, sure. But enough of that nonsense <laughs> and banter. Uh, I'm going to throw this back over to Pete because he has, what's the word? Not conglomerated. Uh, what? what is it? Not conglomerated. Curated. That's the word. Yeah, I have. Thank you. <laughs> Curated. Uh, some lovely news stories for us. Pete. Back to you. I have. And I've, and the first thing is what I'm going to say is I'm going to do the same thing I did to Kylie this morning and say, <laughs> I'm sorry, this wasn't on purpose, but uh -huh. it seems like a very heavy me, uh, me news week. It does. Which is not true. It just happened that went. way. Yeah, exactly. It just happened that way. But we have got a news story to start off that's clearly a Kylie story. Yay. <laughs> Go for it. Halo Infinite's multiplayer director oh. has now quit Free for Free Industries. Yep. Coming straight from VGC. This actually, this came from an unlikely source. Uh, this came from Kurt actually on oh. the um, Rapid Reviews Discord. Woohoo! Join us over there. Yeah. So he posted this up, um, and I thought, oh, perfect, gives me a chance to talk about it on the show tomorrow. So I didn't make many comments about it. <laughs> Other right. than. Uh, other than the one that says, um, because he posted it in the wrong channel. I don't know if you saw this. I did. I, it was in the deals. <laughs> deals channel. <laughs> yeah, he posted it in our gaming deals because we like to post things in there. <laughs> and he just put, oh, I've realized I've posted this in the wrong channel. So my response was, it doesn't matter. It looks like there's a file so fire sale at 343 anyway. Yes. <laughs> yes. Which, uh. considering that was quick off the cuff, like literally like 30 <laughs> seconds after he posted that, I'm pretty surprised how oh, good that was. Oh gosh, oh dear, oh dear. Oh. So, anyway, this is coming from VGC. Uh, stories, uh, most stories you use this week are from VGC, apart from the final one. I won't tell you where I got it from until we cover it. Oh. Give away what the news story That's is. So, um, Halo Infinite's multiplayer creative director is leaving the studio. Uh, Tom French shared the news in a tweet on Friday, writing, After 11 and a half years on Halo, I step out of my Spartan armor for the last time today to head off to new adventures. It's been a massive honor to be part of, of a game I loved as much as a player and adored so much as a developer. I couldn't be more proud of my time at 343. So, uh, French's departure coincides with the recent arrival of the long-awaited features such as Campaign Co-op, Forge Open Beta, and Mission Replay, all of which were previously delayed on several occasions. Uh, the exit follows other studio, uh, senior de uh, departures from Microsoft, uh, from Microsoft Studio, including its director of engineer and body Ross. Mm hmm. <laughs> yeah, that still c confuses me. Yeah. At least. Anyway, so historically, Halo Infinite had a troubled production, uh, suffering various delays and change in leadership in the years leading up to its December 2021 release uh, and since. Following the arrival of the game's a major winter update last month, 343 thanked Halo Infinite for their uh, patience during a year in which the studio struggled to deliver highly anticipated features for the game. 
Uh, this is a quote from them. We know it's uh, it certainly hasn't been the smoothest or quickest ride, but with the winter update, we have an opportunity to show our thanks for community dedication and feedback, which serves as the North Star guiding us to uh, evolve the player experience of Halo Infinite, wrote community writer Alex Wakefoot. Uh, not going to go into too much else. Nah. It's just talking about other stuff, really. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to throw this over to you. Okay. That's also kind of a cool picture that was uh, provided by Tom French with uh, a, a pig in a Spartan armor. Yes. That was quite cool. Yes. Um. So. Oh, it's a warthog. Of course, it's yeah. a warthog. <laughs> <laughs> what an idiot I am. No, you're not. You're not. You're not. Um. What was I saying? So Halo. Oh, Halo. Halo is the entity that broke my heart and continues to break my heart. <laughs> and they just won't come back home. <laughs> yeah. Uh, where they belong. Um, so, Halo. So, okay. They got Joseph Stratton back to improve the main campaign yeah i love the campaign i stand by that it was i mean it wasn't everything i wanted but yeah. it was strong enough you know i played it 10 hours straight as i've mentioned all the time yeah. uh it had to i mean and i have add so it had to be good to keep me you know glued to my seat um mm -hmm. The multiplayer, I've, I've enjoyed only when Pete and Kieran and I play. Uh, we have a little mm -hmm. little team every few months that plays. Um, and outside of that, I have no interest. Like, none. Like, none. The battle pass yeah. wasn't good for me. Now, this is me, okay? Uh, people out there are going to have a different opinion. The battle pass wasn't very good. I've never cared about the shaders. I've never cared about the uh, armor pieces, or very few. Like, I've always wanted the flaming helmet and the flaming shoulder pads, or anything yep. that looks cool and stands out. Samurai armor, Ryabusa, if they ever bring that back, or Hayabusa, not Ryabusa. Uh, uh, but I mean, outside of that, there's been nothing, there's no strong, there's no strength. There's no strong draw uh, from it. It's got all the basics in place. Like, the weapons are pretty good. Uh, no, the weapons are good. You know, good. It's like a satisfactory level. Does that make sense? It gets the job so, done. Yeah, still not a fan of the assault rifle, then. I hate the assault rifle. <laughs> that's me. Again. That's because I am not... I have a different play style. Um, battle rifle and that pistol. Oh, boy. You yeah, they're, they're solid. Uh, absolutely, absolutely solid. Absolutely. Um, They're my it's my favorite ver version of the battle rifle since free. Oh, definitely, a hundred percent. I've said that many times on the show. Uh, it's very close to, to three, um, and the pistol's like way OP as well. Uh, anyway, so all the boring stuff to say that uh, it's just a workhorse. It's just got the job done. But Halo has a huge fan base, a massive legacy fan base. And yeah. all they've done, which a lot of popular media has done in the last few years, Phase 4, Cough, Cough of Marvel, um, yeah. all they've done is the opposite of fan service. I don't really get it. Um, you have a built-in fan base. Play to the fans. Uh, like a lot of the people that grew up playing Halo 1 and 2, and 3 even. Yeah, yeah, even 3 because that would be my age. They have kids now that are coming up, and they could play. You know, it could be like a whole family affair type thing. Yeah. Um, and they didn't even bother that. They're just like, let's be Fortnite and Destiny. And the thing is, that's not Halo. That's not, it's never been Halo. Oh, I'm so sad. <laughs> yeah. I'm I know so we sad. Know. I know we had problems with the idea of it going live service like when mm -hmm. they announced it and we made that pretty abundantly clear that it yeah. was going to be a bit of a concern and I think it's proven to be the case that they never turn Halo live service. 
Well, they, here's the thing. I'm going to say something that's probably a little controversial. If Halo, okay, Halo, look, let's just be freaking honest. I almost said a bad word. Yeah, I know you. <laughs> I caught myself. Let's um, be frank. Let's be frank. There you go. Uh, Halo was created by Bungie. 100%. Uh, Bungie, wow, shock revelation. Uh, woo! Uh, Bungie <laughs> made an amazing game. Not now. I don't know what Bungie's problem right now is. We'll get into that uh, on another show. They've got show. huge issues. Yes, they do. Um, but... Tony. Mm -hmm. Destiny. I'm joking. Mm. Destiny. I'm not stoking the fans of the flames. Of the yes. <laughs> console wars Sorry, here. Ponies. Uh, but Destiny 2. Xbox. Yes. I'm proud to be an expert. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, Destiny 2 had about a good three or four year run there where it was top of the line. Top tier. Oh, it was solid. Mm -hmm. They couldn't do anything wrong. Exactly. So, Except Halo. It, uh, <laughs> uh, but that's so, all I ever hear from Destiny players, especially um, Skill Up, where he's like, yeah, Crucible still sucks. <laughs> um, but, my point before I lose it, uh, so all they had Sorry. to do, if they were going to make Halo live service, I don't think anyone would have batted an eye if they would have just copied Destiny. I mean, you couldn't go, you wouldn't be able to go too far wrong if you did copy Bungie exactly. and Destiny as a live service game. I mean, for Halo specifically, I mean, come on. Like what, in terms of the weapon customization, mm -hmm. armor customization, mm -hmm. all that? Yeah, I agree, yep. 100%. Yep, and like, uh, how, Battle Pass, like, the way they do it. Agreed, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. but I, what I would also say is that having having weapon drops uh, like they do in, um, in, like they do in Destiny would have been mm -hmm. very bad for Halo. Uh, they should not oh, do yeah, things yeah. like legendary drops no. and stuff like that for that. If no. they want to do that, keep that solely cosmetic. I was going to say, because we're talking about legacy here, I don't th I I've never liked... I've never cared particularly well for a lot of the new weapons they introduce uh, into Halo. No. I don't think Halo should be that sort of game. Um, but no. as far as, like, cosmetics and stuff, yeah, it was all there. It's all there. And they just, they just, yeah. I mean, it used to be unlockables, but, you know. They, yeah, exactly. They but, dropped the ball. I mean, Centro, but, Centro in the chat mm -hmm. does technically raise that pr that point in the fact that he does. Mm -hmm. Says, I'll never understand how we got to the point where people pay, uh, people paying for something to have, uh, they have to keep playing to unlock stuff. Right. Like, you can literally pay $10 and then not get anything. You're paying for the possibility yeah. to get things. Exactly. It will never not melt the mind. Exactly. Like, uh, back on Halo... Um... ODST and even Halo 3. Oh, you... what? The, the bad one? Yeah, which I feel like a dummy for calling it bad when it came out. Um, even though I loved it and played it like all the time with my friends. Because it's starting the... to look like a really good game now, though, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it is now. <laughs> it's like, holy crap. Um, but, uh, but I think OD... ODST was where I really started doing the unlockables. Because uh, Halo mm. 3 had a couple, but yeah, not. I don't think it was as big as ODST. But I can't remember because all that's kind of muddled. That was a long time ago. Um, it was a fair while. But, and to be fair, ODST was more of an expansion than anything. In, in its own way. Um, oh, I, I kind of want to play it. Anyway, um, but my point being that uh, I enjoyed unlocking those things. I didn't have to buy anything. And mm. I just had to work for it. Um and there was a kind of satisfaction and reward system in that. Whereas exactly what Centro is saying, you could pay ten, you know, ten dollars or whatever, and not get anything. Mm. Like, why it's would crazy, you do really. that? Yeah, exactly. But yeah, I think it's just the state of the games industry and the whole live service that was my principle point. at the moment. Anyway, <laughs> that was that was actually where I was going with this, Pete. Uh, I'm getting a little bit sleepy. Brought you back on track. Uh-huh. <laughs> but uh, Halo is hanging by a thread. I'm just going to say it. Mm. And that breaks my heart to say it. I love Halo. This, the main campaign is not bad. 
it could have been stronger, but it's not bad. Um, yeah. They need a complete reform to come in. Yep. Just, just, just fix it. Make it look. Let's just be honest. Make it Halo Three mixed with Reach. That's all anybody wants. That's all we all want. And we wanted Forge when it should have been released. <laughs> that's I now haven't for even... me. That's probably one of the biggest things that I thought was absolutely terrible is how much yeah. they kept left behind for so long. And it's like. I love Forge. I have not even bothered to download it and do anything with it. Um, and also, co-op. Why? Why, Halo? Why did you release without co-op? Yeah, I <sighs> agree. It's such a weird thing. Like, campaign co-op and, you know, is an absolute just... staple of the mm -hmm. series. Like, exactly. why would you think about launching a game without it? Yeah, exactly. It's just... I think the problem was is that they knew that they like they knew that they were going to get a lot of kickback for potentially delaying the game again. I guess. But I'd ra I'd rather the game been delayed and come out feature complete than actually come out in the state that it did. Yeah, because like, I think the multiplayer was fantastic to a certain degree. To, yeah, like no, the potential was there. Like when yeah. when we started uh, playing that multiplayer, even when the whole Rappers View crew would get in, remember those? It was great. That was fun because that's all that's all it's about is you know socializing mm. with your friends and stuff yeah exactly and that was always what halo managed to do mm -hmm. best absolutely that's how i kept in touch with my friends forever yeah uh was halo 3 and odst uh mm -hmm. and just gaming constantly yeah so now um, i didn't play them as much with friends but i did when when i did play them they were like lan or like oh, offline yeah. with a few people it was that's always true too fun. i did forget so about lan fun land parties um so, but now i played every saturday um up to four hours sometime one saturday me and my guy played eight hours nice that is not very Kinda good cool. eight hours of halo i was like this is awesome <laughs> yes i've never and spent this much about... time yeah i was like that needed and a week to recover i was gonna say probably two weeks. <laughs> yeah Never spent that much time with another human, so that was no. funny. So, uh -huh. in terms of this, then, what do you think that um, Free for Free need to do to recover this, or do you think that they just need to scrap it, go back to the drawing board? I think they need to go back to basics. Um, there's this uh, phrase in music called De, Cap De Capo al Fine, which means go back to the beginning and play to the end. And I use that Not in my life. Uh, and I think that's what uh, 343 needs to do. They need to go back to the beginning, strip it down to the basics, and play mm -hmm. to the end. You know, stick with it. But you've got to strip it back. I don't know what you're doing. No one knows what you're doing. Strip okay. it back for the fans. Yeah. I agree. But yeah. I'm also going to add one slight bit of sure. uh, constructive bit of feedback. Mm hmm Stop using your own proprietary engine. Just use oh, Unreal. Yeah. It makes the job so much easier. I'm going to agree with you like, there. I would have disagreed pay, a few months ago. Like, but... Pay a slight bit of money to mm -hmm. Epic to license out their engine. And then you have a free on the, the Epic Game Store then as well. With, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, in, terms of, like, in terms of the, well, the revenue split with the fact that they're using that like as per Epic's is. license agreement now. Well, the thing is, I'm pretty sure, yeah, Halo was supposed to be the thing that sold the Xbox S and X. <laughs> S and X. Um, and if you're going to have a game, you know, spearhead your console, you need to make it the best of the freaking best. Yeah, it's free. It's a free product. Yep. So what? It's going to sell everything else. Literally, it's going to exactly. sell everything else on the back of it. You make but it... that's the thing as well, is that, like, not only is it, like, a free game to a certain degree, mm -hmm. like, it's on Game Pass, mm -hmm. PC players can can now play campaign. Yep. Like, nobody has to pay a single penny for it. You only pay money for it if you want to. Exactly. And even then they've screwed the pooch on that one. Oh, I know. They really did. So, uh, Nana has put, uh, kill off Infinite, make a good game in style, style of Halo 1, because that might bring back some people. I mean, maybe that is what they should do. I keep thinking they should try and save Halo Infinite, but you know what? Nah. Say that chapter is over. 
We're going to do they, they can't because Microsoft have already promised a 10 year project with it. So. I don't know. They really, really messed this one up. How do you mess up your flagship property? Like, just. Uh, I could tell you one way. Bonnie, whatever her I, name is. Uh, no, not just that. Um, you you place said property on the box for the Series X <laughs> yeah. and don't get it to come out at the same time as the Series X. Why would they do that? Like, it's just been misstep after misstep. Exactly my point. The so whole thing has just been a complete S show, like the whole way through. It's yeah. just a joke. It's awful. All I, right. I told I you a long time ago I was worried about it. And... Yeah, no. And I was like, no, it's, you know, Father Phil's in charge and... Uh, Okay, so oh, just answer me this stuff. question. Who has two thumbs and was correct? Oh, gosh. Look, I'm pretty sure mine was naive optimism. I was holding I'm on. I'm going to... Okay, I'm going to agree with you. <laughs> I was holding my, on to that like, hope. Yours was naive optimism. Yes, but mine yours was, was cynicism. Uh, reality. Re reality cynicism. <laughs> um, realistic cynicism. There you go. Um, okay. yeah. speaking, speaking of cynicism... Yes. Because I think there's only going to be one cynical person on this one, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, the Last of Us, uh, the HBO TV series, oh. second trailer has now dropped. Yes, it has. Do you want to go for it, or shall I? You go, because I've been complaining the whole time about Halo, so it's your turn. <laughs> okay. To the surprise of none. Yeah. I'm going to watch this. What? That is not that you... Yeah, the bait and switch. I that went for the bait and switch. Then. Surprise of none? <laughs> Mr. I'm not watching this. I'm not watching this for like the last three years. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. This act this second trailer gave me some actual story beats that I could go with. It, it, it wasn't just all visual spectacle. Like, which was the thing that let the first trailer down for me. Yeah. Yeah, I can agree. This one actually feels like it has some character development, some good dialogue. Uh, it actually shows some some beats of the story where they might um, uh, might actually try and do something different from the game. Like, and whilst I don't particularly like the casting of Pedro Pascal, <laughs> I think he finally looks like he's starting to fit the bill with Joel. Yeah, I I I'm so neutral was it apathetic yeah uh towards you know joel who they would have got to represent what I'm i most... think whatever way it would have been very difficult casting yeah exactly i'm more impressed with uh what's her face uh bella ramsey yeah uh because i like i know her obviously from game of thrones mm -hmm. and she's a spunky little spitfire on there so i'm not surprised but i'm very pleased uh yeah with her turn um i'm still so i don't know i'm still just uh, i'm on the fence about it i want it to work i want it to be good because again as i've stated so many times no matter what i feel about the last of us part two which is not yeah. positive uh the last of us part one was a beautiful narrative mm. It was a terrible, like, shooter. <laughs> really yeah. bad. You think Callista Protocol is bad? Oh, don't, because I've heard <laughs> so many really bad things about it, that one. It really, like, just watching a couple of clips as I've been doing, it's really giving me flashbacks to The Last of Us Part 1. The gunplay. It's very yeah. similar. But, uh, oh gosh, I saw, just saw it since you put in. Uh, Pete is the last of us. Well, that one, watch this. that one, and then his next line. <laughs> oh, the last of us three balls, balls, brilliant, <laughs> fantastic, love it. But um, <laughs> yeah, I don't. Uh, yeah, I, I'm gonna. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna let this one just come. <laughs> God, that was gonna not sound good. I'm gonna let this okay. one. All the episodes drop. And then maybe I'll binge it. I don't yeah, really see, binge stuff. Is, is that... I don't like binging stuff, but... Fair enough. Like The thing was is that I saw... Um, one of the things that made me a little bit more interested now uh -huh. is because they finally revealed where they're playing it in the UK. And I'm like, oh, I've got Sky. I'm happy. Oh, I can watch this. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So that, that was sort of like, yeah, I'll watch it because I can. Yeah. I'm not, I, I'm not necessarily paying any extra money to watch it. 
That's a valid So I will watch it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I was a bit more impressed with this second trailer than I was the first. Yeah. Um... Speaking of second trailers. <laughs> but, Kara, sorry, Kara. No, no, it's fine. That's fine. It's just like fading. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Speaking of second trailers, mm -hmm. uh, the Mario Brothers movie had a, oh. uh, a direct over the week where they revealed the second trailer for the movie. Yeah, Pete. I want to know. You're the one I want to know. You love it, don't you? Okay. I'm... I'm fading on this. I'm really fading. I was positive on the first trailer and now I'm fading. Yeah. Um, but okay, we're going to get controversial now just because I know Pete's hot button issues and I know my hot button issues. Uh, let's just get to the meat of this. Um, so honestly, what is your thoughts on Girl Boss Princess Peach? I like it. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, I... I... I have nothing wrong with strong, independent Princess Peach. Because she is, like, I've, that's how she comes across in a lot of the games. No, but, but that's now how her character has started to become <laughs> a hell of a lot more ever since basically yeah. Super Princess Peach on the DS. Mm -hmm. And Sincho, don't worry, that's coming. Uh, We're getting to that. Yeah. I promise. But, um, yeah, I was really shocked at the reaction to... I'm just calling her girl boss because that's what everybody else calls her. I use that yeah, term I ironically. I don't... I, I use that term about myself ironically as well. Of course. Um, yeah. Um, it's a very derogatory, terrible term. But anyway, my point was... I'm going to remember it. Oh, that doesn't seem out of character for no, Princess No, I don't think it is. Yeah. Um... Mario... Like, the thing is, is the games haven't really done the whole damsel in distress Not for thing a long for time. Quite a long period. And when they do, it's literally for the main story. I was going to say... Because it's like it's fulfilling the beats of what makes a Mario game, let's say. But if you look at how it was in Odyssey, mm -hmm. after the fact that you completed the game, she goes off on her own adventure and you have to find her constantly. Yes. Like, because she's gone and done her own thing. So that's Yay. very fitting with Peach as a character now. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's just, it, it, that, that, uh, whatever it's called, not controversy, but anyway, that blowback or whatever, uh, mm. was very surprising to me. Um, especially people my age and your age, Pete, who grew up with, if you, I don't know if you saw it, I told you when I was a kid, they had the Mario Power Hour or whatever it's called on, uh, on VHS. Oh, Super Mario Brothers Super Show. Yes. Um, <laughs> aw. I love it so much. Um, so do I. Yeah. Bring your own. <laughs> I, I was literally singing that in my head. <laughs> um, anyway. Anytime anyone mentions the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, it's the first thing I think of. <laughs> the brothers, the brothers, the brothers. Anyway. Um... Mario. <laughs> anyway, that's not my point. Um, oh, stupid nostalgia. Uh, but. I love a thing. It is hell of a thing. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, even, but even in there, you know, she's a girl boss. Yeah. You know? Uh, just, I mean, just looking at stills, I, I actually think, like, each character that they've revealed so far, with exception to one, mm -hmm. looks pretty spot on. Who do you think doesn't look spot on? Oh, Donkey Kong looks weird to me. I do <laughs> not like the redesign. Is it, is it the eyes? Yeah, it's the eyes. Yeah, that's what a lot of people have been saying. Yeah, I don't particularly like the visual aesthetic to that one. Yeah. And I'll be honest, I'm glad we didn't hear a voice. I, a lot of people said that too. No, because um, there's one thing. Uh, look, I hate Seth Rogen. I think the guy is an absolute tool. Like, he looks. He is an awful, awful person who's so caught I, up in the Hollywood I bubble. Like I don't want to. I don't care about any of his projects now. Yeah. Like, so for him playing Donkey Kong, one of my probably one of my favourite side characters out of the Mushroom Kingdom, mm -hmm. and it's like great. Uh, the first time we're going to get Donkey Kong on screen, going to play by an absolute jerkwad like Seth Rogen. Thanks, Nintendo. I don't even think he's going to be on screen very long, from my understanding. I don't think he is, but I'd rather not listen to him. Yeah, 
I because I know it's just like I made this prediction when they cast it. And I went, yeah, drugs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's just Seth Rogen. It's his stick, and I hate it. It's yeah. so boring. It's... Like it it was barely funny in the two thousands, and it's gotten even worse now. Yeah. Um, I think though the weird part of all of this, because I know it, this is my thing as well. Jack Black mm. is like, he's so cool. Like oh, he's he does. the MVP of this entire it's movie just, already. Like, who knew he was going to... I mean, of course I knew, because I love him. Uh, <laughs> who knew he was going to be, like, a perfect Bowser? No, I, again, to be I honest do. with you, I'm kind of <laughs> glad that he's actually just gone for it. Yes, it's like, it's... That's like, the he's thing. not played it safe. No, he hasn't, and... So... From everyone I've heard so far, sorry to interrupt. No, you're fine. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you've raised a really good point here. Is that Chris Pat feels very underwhelming as Mario. Yeah. Like, I know everyone keeps saying it, but I'm so underwhelmed by it. There's a big weird. reveal for, for Peach's voice. Not a fan. Like, I like Anya Taylor Joy. I think she's a decent actress when she puts the effort in. Yeah. She's fantastic in Last Night in Soho. I really want to see but, that watch it with yeah, it, it film it so amazing. so good it does she's amazing. quite min like whilst the advertisement said that she was in it quite a lot she's quite minimal actually well she wasn't uh, that great in peaky blinders i haven't seen it she wasn't that great um she was good in split right right um, she was in split wow yeah yeah I didn't know that. yeah the james mcavoy movie yeah yeah was, yeah. Uh, yeah yeah she's good in that so wow i'm very underwhelmed by her uh, obviously, my my feelings about Seth Rogen say say the <laughs> Yeah. But the biggest get in in three nil lads. <laughs> That's um, football for our yeah, I'm, it, it's over now. Like we're fifty six minutes in, it's over. Let's just say it as it is. The other big surprise actually is <laughs> we got this in the first trailer was Keegan Michael Key as Toad. I think he's great. That was him. I didn't realize that was him. Yeah, I think he. I think he's going to be cool. a fantastic Toad. Yeah, absolutely. So oh, that's funny. There, there's some good, there's some good stuff for this. It, like, and I think Nana's mentioned this in the chat very well. It says this, this movie looks good. Like, visually, looks astounding. It, it it's looks really, cool. really good. But why, um, why did they change the eyes? I'm confused about that. I don't know. They did he that just, on Sonic um, as well. I know. And he says uh, the final part of this says, "I'm stunned by how much this film remembers. It's a video game." And that's what I'm so glad about as well. They've right. clearly got beats in there that Mario fans will really love, but have also considered well, the everyday movie going public. I was gonna say Sonic pulled that off, but they had to wait. You know, they had to get the fans had to kick a up a storm you know, we, for that to happen. Yeah, the fa the fans did, and it worked. Mm -hmm. But I still feel that the second movie is a lot more solid than the first because I, I actually would, it, it yeah. remembers it's a video game movie. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I am probably not going to watch this in theaters, believe it or not. Funnily enough, this comes out on Good Friday over here, so I'm already off, so I'm going to see it. Well, I know you are, and definitely so, report back. Yeah, well, let's just say that the day after Good Friday, so the Easter Sunday, we're probably it's probably just going to be a Mario movie spoiler special, if I'm honest. <laughs> right. Just putting it out there, so you might want to go and watch it. <laughs> Well, we'll see. We'll see. I don't know. I'm on the If fence. I pay for your ticket... No, that's not why. <laughs> uh, am if I'm... I pay for your ticket, will no, you go? That, that's, no, that's silly. I can get a ticket for like £4.50. I'm part of the like... I know, but Odeon if I pay for your ticket, club. would you definitely go on day of release? No, I'll go. I'll, I'll, we'll see. We'll talk. We'll see more trailers. We'll, we'll discuss. We'll discuss. <laughs> okay, now uh, listen, but if I end up watching it, then I will probably join you too. There you go. Perfection. Cool. Sounds good. Okay. So, yeah, underwhelmed, let's say, at the moment again. First trailer was solid. Second one, probably not so much. However, I did... I'm not going to say I squealed, because it was a bit too late to be squealing. Right. Uh, I did have a, uh, a big old smile on my face to the Mario Kart section. <laughs> <laughs> That's... Yeah. I was a big fan of that. I, I was saw. a big, big fan of that, especially considering they're driving on Rainbow Road. Exactly. I saw lots of positive that was just, reactions. That uh, was good. I did, and the first thing that came to mind was the music for Stairs Rainbow Road. Of course, it did. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <Aww, laughs> yeah. So yeah, I think that's enough discussion of trailers. Let's move on to the controversy, shall we? Yeah, because I'm getting. Sleepy. And as I know, and as Sancho rightly put it, 
we're covering Smash. Yo. We're covering the Smash stuff. So Yo. he put, I hate Nintendo because of the Smash fiasco. I don't even care for Smash, but that, that move was unbelievable. Oh, there's a lot more to it than meets the eye, as I have found out. So let's cover this, shall we? So this one's going to come from uh, VGC. Uh, Major Smash Brothers tournament is shut down by Nintendo. So, yeah. Uh, uh, and Nana's just put, Pete, this is all you, I know. I did preface the show by saying it feels like a heavy news week for me. It was, but it wasn't on purpose. But I got to kick so, it off with Halo, so. Yeah, that's why I put it first. There you go. So, uh, Nintendo has allegedly shut down a large Smash Brothers fan tournament at the last minute. Its organisers claimed. Uh, Smash World Tour, oh god, he's... I'm sure they're, like... I'm not touching that. I can't touch that comment, Sencho. Why? I can't yet. Oh. So, um, oh, Smash World Tour. Okay. That gives the game yeah. away. Right. There, there, there we go. <laughs> okay. So, the Smash, the Smash World Tour, which is set to have oh. its annual championships on the 9th of December to the 11th with a prize pool of $250,000, will now seemingly no longer go, event, go ahead, with Nintendo being blamed for the cancellation, rival tournament organizer Panda being implicated in the decision. Nintendo has denied some of the allegations. Interesting, it's only some. In a statement yeah. posted by the organizers of the event, it's claimed that, the dis uh, that despite having productive conversations with Nintendo about, organize about receiving the ongoing license to host the Smash Brothers tournaments, Nintendo suddenly stated that the Smash World Tour can no longer go ahead. So this is a quote. Uh, Without any warning, we received notice the night before Thanksgiving from Nintendo that we can no longer operate, it said. This was uh, especially shocking given our discourse with Nintendo over the past 12 months. Uh, the statement also accused the CEO and co-founder co of Panda Global, esports organization with its own officially licensed Smash Brothers tournament, trying to sabotage the SWT, uh, Smash World Tour, I'm just mm. going to use that from now, uh, uh, 2022's events by telling tournament organizers last year that it was shutting down. So another quote, We specifically held off announcing 2022's S SWT at the 2021 Championships. I uh, love the fact that VGC have got an error in it called it Champion Chop Shops. <laughs> nice. Excellent Champion error. <laughs> I mean, is it fitting that a fighting game? You know, you yeah. missed typo there. <laughs> so, uh, as per the request of Nintendo, it said, the aim was to get licensed before our 2022 tour was announced and kicked off in March. During that time period of December to March, we continue our talks with Nintendo. For the first time, we felt like Nintendo were being cons uh, consistently straightforward, transparent, and direct in answering our questions. We also began formalizing details of the 2022 Smash World Tour with various tournament organizers across the world, this time with more confidence than ever. However, we quickly found that many organizers were concerned about joining up in 2022. They told us that they had been told by Alan, CEO and co-founder of Panda, that we were going to get shut down and were not coming back in 2022. Mm -hmm. According to the statement, Nintendo reassured Smash World Tour that Panda's license was not exclusive and that it would speak to the Panda CEO about his alleged behavior. The statement claimed that despite applying for a license in January, Nintendo was slow to process the application, particularly after the Panda Cup was announced in May and only informed Smash World Tour in November that it can no longer continue just weeks before the annual championships. Mm -hmm. So, following the publication of this, of this statement, sorry, this is a very, very long story, but it needs to be discussed. So, um, a Nintendo spokesman gave its own statement to Kotaku. Why would you give a statement to Kotaku? Honestly. Anyway, that's your biggest problem. Uh, that appeared to tell a different story. So, unfortunately, after continuous conversations with Smash World Tour, and after giving the same deep consideration we apply to any tr potential partner, we were unable to come to an agreement with SWT for the full circuit in 2023. Nintendo did not request any changes to or cancellation of remaining events in 2022, including the 2022 championship event, considering the negative impact of the players who are already planning to participate. However, Smash World Tour then responded with a second statement reiterating points made to the original. To be clear, we did not even submit an application for 2023 yet. The license application was the 2022 championship submitted in April. So, uh, this is the final part of the story and then we can discuss a little bit more with it. Nintendo, inclu including all 2023 activity, was an, was an addition we were not even expecting 
In our call that accompanied the statement, we asked multiple times if we would be able to continue to operate without a license as we had in years past with the same unofficial understanding with Nintendo. We were told point blank those times were over. Uh, times are over. They followed up the call with a statement in writing again confirming that both 2022 championships and all 2023 activity were in the exact same boat. Earlier this year, the long-running fran- uh, fighting game tournament, EVO, revealed that Smash Brothers would not be part of their event, uh, stating that Nintendo had opted out of it. Now, I believe... Uh, this is my slight editorial here, uh, because this is not part of the story. I believe there's a bigger issue at play with that one, and I will get to that very soon. Okay. Uh, it was unclear whether Nintendo opted to remove Smash Brothers from the event, uh, but at the time it was believed that it may be down with Nintendo's partnership with Panda to create the first officially licensed circuit for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate and Melee for North, North America. Now, uh, I'm going to say that actually um, Evo, and I think I said this at the time, Evo was purchased by Sony. Right. And I believe that was something to do with it. Nintendo right. don't play well with Sony. Right. And the whole point of it is that uh, Sony bought Evo because they wanted all cons- all games played at their tor- at the tournament to be played on their hardware. Right. Now it's going to be next to impossible to have a Nintendo game there that's played on PlayStation hardware. Yes. This is so true. I think there's a. I think that was a licensing issue to do with that. To do with the fact that they will not work with Sony. Right. So, if my theory paves true, then we'll see, obviously, when the announcements come out for EVO next year, mm-hmm. if Smash Brothers is also not on the board there, mm-hmm. and considering what's also going on elsewhere with Panda stuff, yeah, then it's very clear to see that they're, they're opting for it to be a Sony-only tournament. Sony-only. I know, I heard that as a kid. <laughs> I was like, yeah, cool. So, anyway, as someone who is an outsider to all of this yes how the hell did you react to to it i am confused by a great many things in life okay. but also in this um, <laughs> um i think here's here's what stood out to me again outside observer not in the tournament circuit you know not really a smash player at all no the complete disregard that Nintendo seemed to have for communicating with Panda's representatives. And then waiting the night before an American, a major American holiday, which may seem silly to other people around the world, but that's a major American holiday where, you know, you could be stressing and fretting about something all day. It's going to ruin your day. And that's oh, not cool. Course, yeah. yeah, that's not cool. Um, so I was mostly stunned because I don't, I've never, I've never worked personally with Nintendo because they didn't ever answer my request, uh, for licensing for our tournament. Um, I know. So I don't know if that's standard. Uh, I just know that it's awful and I was very disappointed in that. Yeah. When you told me about that, I was very disappointed at the same Mm -hmm. time as well. Yeah. Because I applied for that months before the fanfare tournament was supposed to happen. Months before. Because we didn't know lockdown was going to be a thing. Um, no. So I applied for it months in advance. Probably a year. Because I, I, tend, I tend to do things a year or two in advance. And uh, I think I applied for it a year in advance. Never heard back. Kept checking. Yeah. A representative will be assigned to you. Never was assigned. So mm. I don't know if that's typical of Nintendo's uh licensing behavior but it wasn't cool seems Uh, a bit normal from what i've been hearing yeah so that bit not cool dude Mm. but what about you as someone involved in the (laughs) whole thing uh, (laughs) is it is it bad enough that i've become so jaded with nintendo and licensing I did uh, like. You weren't surprised. I was not surprised in any way, shape, or form that this happened. Yeah. 
Oh, I mean, I've been following this a little bit more closely, obviously. I've heard other podcasts talking about this and, you know, how a lot of people are obviously, you know, well behind Smash World Tour and all of that. Like, mm-hmm. look, I get it. They want a world tournament. They want a tournament that's going to go across the season like they do with the Overwatch right. League. They want it with, like, yeah. with Street Fighter League and stuff like that. You know, it seems to be the hot new in thing for the... for. On, uh, online tournaments or tournaments in general to have a weekly monthly competition that accumulates ranking points to then yeah. go into a world championship i, I mean, think look that's kind of cool look yeah i was Calum. gonna say I, I actually think that's cool i do enjoy uh, that. i i like it but i think there are other ways to completely distinguish yourself away from being a major competition why not like why do you have to have a weekly or a monthly right like, why can't why can't you just have a, a yearly chart of it. A, a a set of tournaments that mm-hmm. go across the, the the point of the year. You then you know based based on points. Why does it look okay? So why does it need to be specifically branded as a Smash World Tour events? It right. doesn't need to be. Capcom Cup is gives licensed ranking points to other tournaments across the world. Mm-hmm. Like, they then determine whether or not how big that tournament is and how much, lot, how many points you get in terms of the ranking. Right. So, things like EVO are known as a major. So, you get an automatic qualification to the end tournament. Right. Fine. Got no problem with that at all. Why is it that everything needed to be branded as Smash World Tour? Yeah. It didn't need to be. Work with these other com- other tournaments and get them under the banner. If you've got more tournaments under your banner, it looks more of a prospect to Nintendo because it's all about that. It's about the moolah. It's about the money. The De Niro, the Wonga, whatever you want to call it. It's about the money because it is their characters and it is their license. Exactly. So, whilst it sucks that this got cancelled, why are you even going ahead with a tournament when you still haven't got the proper permissions for it? Yeah, like... I'm... I know but people I'm completely do that. conflicted by this, though. This yeah. is the problem. Is that I want to support Smash World Tour. Right. But I can't because they haven't got a contract in place. Yeah. They mm-hmm. had discussions. Mm-hmm. Everyone is, like, the, every single side of this that I've heard so far is everyone's making it out that they were guaranteed for this to go ahead. Nothing was signed. Nothing was signed. Until it is signed on paper, it's not a contract. Yeah. It's an agreement in principle. You're absolutely correct on that. I know, but this, this this is surprisingly what makes me quite a rounded, reasonable person because I'm not willing to side with one or the other. I could see both sides. Oh, yes. Gotta look, we have got to look at the bigger picture here. Is that if you want your license, you have to play ball with a licensee. Yeah. And that's the way of life. I can't... Look, I can't go and throw on a Street Fighter tournament without permission from Capcom. I can't go and do anything like that. It's ridiculous to think that you can. Yeah. If you want to do something like that, go and make your own fighting game. Yes, with hookers and blackjack. I was going to do that and decided against it because I knew you would. (laughs) Um, So, it's it's an awkward situation. I feel completely sorry for the Smash World Tour guys that they've spent all this time organizing stuff and then the day before thanksgiving it just gets completely annexed i don't agree with that principle at all yeah but also if pandora to are involved in this in any way shape or form and it is really starting to look that way that they are mm-hmm. then pff, i don't know what else to say other than fuck panda <laughs> Yep. <laughs> but let's get into it, shall we? Because the next part is a follow-up to this. Yes. So this is coming from Event Hubs, also known in the fighting game community as Event Scrubs. Right. <laughs> I- I've always liked that reference. Yes. It makes me laugh. So over 80% of Panda Global's sponsored fighting game team appears to have resigned so far. Yeah. Mm. Oh, boy. And don't worry, Sencho. I might look at the panda statement on this one, because this is quite a funny read. So, anyway. So, like I said, coming from Event Hubs, uh, the competitive Smash Brothers community is a very different... uh, It's very different than it was just a week ago, and and that now very much includes one... Oh, this is poor. So poor. 
This know. is why I don't use event hubs because they are awful writers. Yes. So, um, and now very much includes one of the largest esports organizations connected to the scene. Following Panda Global's first statement rega uh, made regarding the controversy surrounding the Smash World Tour's cancellation of behind the scenes operations, over 80% of Panda's players and commentators from Smash and the wider fighting game community appears to have resigned from the team so far. That's wild. So once you hear some of the names on here, you'll realize that there is a big, big, big problem. At the time of reporting, top melee competitors, Cody I I B uh, IBDW, uh, Schwab, Justin Plup McGrath, as well as um, Wadi, uh, I'm just going to call them by their, their gaming yeah. names, not their actual full names, St. Cola, Coney, TK Breezy, um, Marine, and uh, Vicky Kitty, <laughs> have all publicly stated their resignations or intentions to do so. Uh, Writing on Twitter, I'm quitting Panda, wrote Pulp. Uh, Plup, sorry. I've truly enjoyed my time there, and they treated me well. Well, to, to... I always find that funny that they have to clarify that they were treated well. Yeah. Makes me wonder. Yeah. But anyway, that uh, might just be the cynicism in me. Uh, I think so, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know that, at a certain point, they had the community's best interest at heart. Well, that says a lot to me at at a certain point. Yeah. Um, I just don't think I could support them anymore. Now I must sleep for 1,000 years in preparation for the next tournament. And I'm not joking, that's how it was written. Nice. So uh, this statement has come from TK Breezy on Twitter. He put, Good morning, thought about it, slept on it. I too will be resigning from Panda. Was going to wait until I get home, but I can talk about more about it. Uh, more in depth about it later that good feeling I had from being under this org and finally being sponsored feels erased with no chance of coming back it's been about four months and I'm happy with the work that was done in that time and the people I've worked with and had a chance to learn about uh, more about not sure what the future holds but I know I'll always find a way anyway uh, this exodus from the company has, or uh, has already dropped Panda's roster of on screen talent confirmed by more than half that's wild. And these are some these are some of the names that a lot of people are now going to start knowing about. So, buckle up, guys. <laughs> Could by confirm by that more than half, with others including Punk, Kizzy K, mm -hmm. Hang, uh, Hook Gang God, Dino, Little Z, mm -hmm. and Justin Wong. Little Z is uh, like the well-known one. And so is Justin Wong, one of the greatest yeah, fighting yeah. game players of all time. I see them on uh, Twitter uh, all the time. Yep. So they have removed mentions of Panda from their Twitter pages, although they've yet to make a formal announcement yet. Um, the monumental response comes in response uh, comes in the aftermath to the SWT announcing the 2022 championships and entire 2023 season will need to be cancelled. Uh, Organisers for the SWT accuse Panda and its CEO, Alan Bunny of improper conduct mm -hmm. in their attempts to recruit major uh, major tournaments for their own Panda Cup. Uh, Panda's response to the allegation came three days later, but did little to quell the backlash from the Smash community. So, let's get into it. Um, I, just, I didn't like that. Also, <laughs> let me just say that this tweet, um, this quote tweet came from quite a notable person on Twitter in terms of the Smash community, mm -hmm. because this is the one that's linked on the article, and it says... I will. I won't be attending Panda Cup. Too little and way too late. Oof. And that came from Hungry Box. Uh, and yes, that is the collective sigh of everyone who knows who Hungry Box going. Oof. I don't know so, who Hungry Box is. Probably one of the greatest Smash Melee players of all time. Oh wow. That's uh, crazy. Basically, made Jigglypuff a viable character in Melee. Oh okay, okay, okay. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, oh let me read gosh. this statement from Panda. Mm -hmm. It's long, so I'm just going to go through it. Really it's a whole A4 page. Holy crap! I know. Okay. Um, the team that manages and administers the Panda Cup have, have worked diligently to create an exciting, welcoming environment for competitive Smash throughout 2022. Behind this efforts are over 40 members of the Smash community, including video editors, web developers, talent managers, sponsor, uh, sponsorship 
uh, salespeople and more. We've provided resources, expertise, and logistic, uh, logistical help to 10 major events this year. As a result, the Panda Cup began and continues to be a project of passion that seeks to magnify and enhance community efforts made throughout competitive Smash. Excuse me. I need a drink now. I'm dying here. <laughs> Rehydrate. Yes. So we were all we were all as surprised as the public to see the announcement of the Smash World Tour Championships cancellation as well as the accompanying statement which attacked the hard work and ethics of those behind the Sma the Panda Cup. Oof. The team was not informed of any intention to cancel the Smash World Tour Championships twenty twenty two, nor has the team ever engaged in conversations that sought those ends. As Nintendo of America indicates in their own statement, the organizer of the Smash World Tour would not require to cancel their 2022 event, or championship event, and any implication that the Panda Cup team had any influence in that regard is false. We were excited to see a fruitful year of competition come to an end with both December Circuit events and the Smash World Tour's decision to cancel theirs is disappointing. Panda has listened to the community and, and changed some of our approaches to working with tournaments based on that feedback. In the Smash World Tour statement, there are a number of allegations leveled against Dr. Allen, the CEO of Panda. In reality, Dr. Allen, as Nintendo of America has corroborated, has been one of the more vocal supporters of the broader community and the Smash World Tour organizers' internal conversations. However, the Panda Cup team does acknowledge and regret any intera an interaction between Dr. Allen and Beyond the Summit, uh, mm. I believe Beyond the Summit is a tournament series. Oh, right. Uh, in which he spoke in a manner which did not reflect either guidance from Nintendo or our own standards. Hmm. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Uh, Panda took efforts to rectify the situation immediately, and in the second half of the year, a dedicated team made up of multiple staff members were assembled to manage Panda Cup activities and serve as, the as a primary point of contact for event runners. Uh, removing the possibility of future miscommunication from occurring. The Panda team has invested thousands of hours towards making sure this, this year's cup uh, has been as strong as an offer of an offering as we can provide, and we look forward to continue to build alongside the communities we serve a promising future for Smash. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's a mouthful. <laughs> that's what she said. Hmm. <laughs> now, look. I'm interested to hear or wanting to know more about what this interaction between Dr. Allen Beyond the Summit yeah. team was. Yeah, I'm curious about that as well. They had to call it out. That meant something. That's pretty amazing. And this is coming from the legal team. Yeah. Of Panda. Because this statement would have been vetted by lawyers, by CEOs. Yep. yep. That this would have gone through the rafts, which is obviously why it comes a couple of days after the fact. Yeah. We we had we had this again, which is disappointing to say the least. When we did the Mick Gordon versus yes. Bethesda stuff, and we said the exact same thing, yeah. it's got to be vetted by the correct legal team to make sure they're not using anything that could be used against them in court law. Yep. Exactly. But weird that they've now called out their own CEO in a statement. I know about <laughs> some interactions, which. Okay, if they've put that in their statement, how bad was the interaction then? That's what I wonder. Yeah. So I'm a bit interested about that. Anyway. Jesus Christ, this goes on and on and on. <laughs> so I'm just going to carry on talking about, uh, carry on with this story. So mm -hmm. many other top players who aren't sponsored by Panda have announced their intentions to no longer attend the Panda Cup finale, including Liquid Hungry Box, uh, SFAT, Axe, uh, Meister, Meister uh, The Buzz, yeah. Magi, Fatality, Zane, AM SA, uh, Mango, oh god, that's a big one as well, Jesus. Uh, Fiction, Nun, Wizrobe, MK Leo, that's a huge one too. Uh, Meds, Pip Squeaks, um, uh, Kodorin, Ginger, and Eddie Mexico. The Panda Cup finale has has not been cancelled and is still scheduled to take place between the 16th and 18th, although you generally need to have some players to put on a tournament. <laughs> I was going to say. I'm not even joking. That's actually written in the article. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. 
I wish that wasn't me editorializing. Oh, that is an actual gosh. editorial in their goddamn article. That is crazy. <laughs> So, uh, similarly, this leaves the future of Panda Esports organization in grave peril as well, considering their their talent roster outside the FGG consists, <laughs> yeah. currently consists of only one chess player. Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh my gosh. But this is where things get more interesting, and I love this development, by the way. When yeah. I read this, I was literally punching the air this morning going, yes! Oh my gosh. To try and make up for the Smash World Tour 2022's cancellation, oh popular streamer Ludwig has announced his intention to host the Scuffed World Tour on December 18th. Oh with my gosh! To the top, SW, top eight SWT competitors in Smash Ultimate and Melee to raise money for VGBC and players, so video game bootcamp, by the way. Oh, right, okay. So this is the tweet that came from Ludwig to announce the uh, announce it in light of Panda slash Nintendo's lackluster response. I'm happy to announce the Scuffed World Tour, a one day melee ult slash ultimate event, Sunday 12, 12 18, featuring the eight highest placing SWT competitors with all money raised uh, raised for VGBC. That's wild. These are the top eight I will, vote, I will invite from each game. If anyone is unable to attend, we will fly out the next highest points earner. Also happy to provide a to a fifty thousand dollar total prize pool for the event. I'm not surprised because he's got it. Oh, I know he has. He's massive. He's, so yeah. Uh, so the top top current uh, standings in terms of melee uh, in the top eights was Hungry Box, VGBC, Red Bull, Ansa, Zane, IBD, IBDW, Mango, sixty nine percent Fiction great name um bcs 2j and professor pro and in terms of the, the ultimate is um mk leo uh bandit sonics uh zeta cola uh 26 r owning uh solitary gluttony that's a great name <laughs> i as like well. that, that oh, cool. solary gluttony sorry moist light liquid riddles <laughs> and liquid the buzz so that's pretty cool that's wild. So, yeah, I'm not reading any more of this story. Oh, I've done enough reading yes, it today. Yes, I think that, that's, yeah. Is that uh, our final news story? Oh, no, that Sincho! Is, <laughs> that is our final news story. I'll go through the chat very, very soon because there was a, a few comments about this particular one. But as an outsider looking in, someone looking Ooh. at this where where do you sit with this do you think panda are completely screwed do you think yeah, nintendo 100%. have screwed the pooch on this one by yes i think both the answer to both of those questions is yes <laughs> okay um holy crap uh, i mean thank goodness for ludwig um because i think that'll keep some of the players afloat but mm -hmm. they really messed up both I've messed up. Yeah. Holy crap. That's a lot bigger than I thought it was. Oh, I know. <clears throat> I, That's when crazy. I when I was hearing about the Smash World Tour stuff, I was just mm -hmm. thinking, oh, this will be gone in a week. It'll be like, done. Because this was all going off last week. Right, yeah. Because, see, um, I was kind of following along with Little Z and uh, J James Wong, right? That's it. Justin Wong. Justin Wong. Um, I was kind of following along their stuff. Uh, what they were uh -huh. posting and stuff, but because I'm not familiar with the the whole deal, like some of it went over my head. Um, of course, yeah. But holy crap! Like, how could you drop the ball this bad? Yeah. So, so what you're saying is essentially is you were glad that I was here to summarize the whole thing and make sense of it. Yeah, a hundred percent. I'm joking. And I'm not even being ironic. I no, I could barely make sense of half of this because none of this does make sense. I've never come across anything like this. Mm. There's nothing to it compare it to. It wouldn't be the first time that companies have got involved with shady enterprises and I mean, it, that's true. Getting them on the butt. But nothing quite like this. This is crazy. Yeah, this is madness. Like, I, it's just I'm like everybody keeps shocked. making everybody keeps making wrong turns <laughs> over and over, you know. Oh. Yeah, constantly. It's absolutely ridiculous. Like this is kind of still going on. Like why? Mm -hmm. It feels to me like Nintendo said their part. Fine, you might not agree with the decision because this is not the first time they've done things like that. But mm -hmm. 
like I said before, you have to understand they're very protective over their licenses and doing anything they outside are. of the realms of possibility, like with their licenses, means they're going to shut you down. Yeah. You know, yeah. they they have an image to maintain. Well. And let let's be perfectly honest with, like with all here, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna say it exactly how I see it. If I'm totally honest. The 2020 allegations that were going around has probably not sat very well with Nintendo when it comes to sexual misconduct. Yeah. And um, in some cases, actual statutory rape. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Yeah, there's a big one at the moment. I'm not going to mention it. Mm -hmm. Well, I will mention is Nairo. So one of the players is Nairo. He was a 21-year-old at the time. And uh, he had sex with a 15-year-old. Oh, don't do that. Yeah, oh, he got banned, rightly so. Yeah. But now he's no longer banned. So he's allowed to attend, like, he's not allowed to attend tournaments, but he's allowed to restream stuff. Because apparently he was the victim. Except, I'm going you see to my point? It's crazy, my isn't mouth it? Closed. That's not cool. Like, at I'm all. sorry, but how is a 21 year old yeah, victim no, that's... to a 15 year old? No. That's ridiculous. Uh, 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 I, and and it mm -mm. and yeah, I'm not saying the person that was also involved in this because I think if you search Naira, you're gonna find out about it immediately anyway. No, we will avoid like, doing that. But yeah. No, but it's just mad. It's totally insanity. Total insanity. Like there are people out there, and I'm not even gonna say the VGBC are even a good po good point of contact for this one because some of those people are shady too. Right. There's. I know that the Smash commentary community are not exactly the hotbed of greatness, and Technicals is probably one of those people, but he's one of the only people that seems to be calling this out and gets, keeps getting swept under the rug for it. In fact, because he's made mention of this online on his videos, he's now been added to the ban list for criticising them. Of course. The Smash community uh... is awful at times. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Some of them are feel like some of them. Not going to say all of them. They are hideous to say the least. Right. There's some good people in there. I mean, I'm not going to say that there are some great people. There's some entertaining creators. But every single one of them has got got some kind of issue, and I have mm. real problems with the Smash community. Uh, Nano, can I ask who you mean by that damn dumbass? I right. want to know who you mean. Probably the one you just <laughs> mentioned. <laughs> I'm just wondering, because I think he might be talking about technicals here. Oh my goodness. So, um, anyway. But there's there's a lot of stuff with the Smash community. It's a lot of weird, weird stuff. And it's just... As a license holder, and you do a quick Google search, mm -hmm. what are you going to find the most news stories about when it comes to the Smash community? Sexual oh, yeah. misconduct. yeah. Rape allegations. Oh gosh. Uh, and pedophilia. Oh dear. When it comes to a kids game. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. Oh, he's mentioned. He said Nairo. Thank you. I'm glad you uh, glad you agree. Nairo is an idiot. Oh my goodness. So it's just so Smash World Tour can't help that. the The reputation of the Smash community is completely in the toilet. It needs to. Go away, regroup. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It needs to reform. Um, they started doing a really good thing by having the global, the global ban list, mm -hmm. which I think is great, by the way, but they've now stopped that, apparently, because it was too much work for people to work on. That's... Look, if you're going to appoint yourself as someone who operates a global ban list, don't then complain <laughs> two years later yeah. it's too much work. That's so dumb. Ugh, it's so stupid. So yeah, the, the Smash Brothers community needs to go away elsewhere. They need to do something to reform their community. They need some top people at the top who have got no skeletons to hide in their closet. Mm -hmm. Oversee an entire rebrand of the entire like esports competition. Talk to Nintendo and say, look, we've distanced ourselves away from these scummy, horrible people. They are no longer on our list. They are banned from all competitions. Reenact the global ban list. Have have people there that are not um, that are not affiliated with any player. Right. They are completely right. uh, impartial. 
and enforce a global ban list based on actual rules. Yeah. Because the rules that they had in place were great, but it was very clear to see that certain people were getting away with stuff that most people wouldn't. Yeah. Now, there was, there was someone on there, and I cannot remember the person's name, but she assaulted people at a tournament oh, and is still allowed to go. No, that's not cool. Yeah. She was drunk and slapped two no. people on the same night. You're... Now, those are two, those two are level three. Mm -mm. According to the global ban list, those are two rule. Those are level three um, um, violations mm -hmm. and should result in an instant ban. Yes, absolutely. Two on the same day and she's never banned. No, that's ridiculous. not cool. That is just not Utterly cool. ridiculous. Don't hit people. Unless you're but then, me. But then, of course, you've also got collusion. You've also got... Fuck, you've got so much other stuff going on that... The Smash community can never recover from something like this no. until it decides to distance itself away and rebrand. Yeah. And I think that's what Panda were probably trying to do. But the fact of the matter is that the Panda have gone the wrong, wrong way about it, probably. have done all the wrong things. Yeah. And they've also aligned themselves with all the wrong people yeah. at the same time. Sheesh. I mean, the fact... I, I said I wasn't going to mention this. Sod it. I'm going to mention oh, it. Oh, dear. Esam is a massive hypocrite. He is one of the higher ups or one of the people that's very high up in Panda, mm -hmm. but he's the one that got caught out for once calling someone the N word. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. What Why? a great guy to have top, like near the top of your industry. I just, Unbelievable. I don't get it. I don't get it. I'm never going to get it. No, but I, I've said enough now. I, I, I'm now getting angry. Yeah. Let's avoid but, Pete's anger. No, it's something that I I love Smash. I yeah, love I know the you game, do. I know but you I do. hate the community. I, the community sucks. You have been saying that for literally years. Um, yeah, I have. Yeah. I saw them in person at bloody Evo, and it was yeah. the, it was disgraceful. Some of the things that I I could have seen there, because apparently that uh, those assaults actually happened at the same Evo I was at. That is insane. <laughs> and a lot of these allegations all happened at the same Evo I was at. That's crazy. Is it any wonder that's, that the Evo doesn't want Smash back? I wouldn't want Smash back. No, absolutely not. Ugh. So, anyway, let's All go right. through some of these. So, okay. Uh, Sencho put, I'm sure there's some Panda stuff in there. It's just a dumpster pile. Well done, you got it correct. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he said that the Panda Global Statement is worth a read, but it's long as well. Well, you got your wish. <laughs> Uh, PG needs to get rid of their CEO and restructure, and now the FGC is kind of switching to P uh, PCs. Um, uh, at least there is a big debate about it because of the good old input lag the consoles bring with them. Yes, I agree. Uh, I just know that Nintendo will never understand, uh, never understood online competitive gaming, and I'll never forgive them for that. I think they're getting mm. slightly better. But they're still very far behind some of the major platform holders at the moment. Right. Just right. look at Splatoon. Yeah, exactly. Splatoon is there. Smash Brothers is not. Mm -hmm. The problem with Smash Brothers is that it was all very much community driven from the very beginning. Right. And they've never once... Like, I wouldn't say never once. People have probably clearly tried to get Nintendo involved over the years mm -hmm. and failed. But that's not to say that Nintendo haven't not been involved before because there was a tournament circuit back in the early 2000s, but I cannot remember the name of it, but they were licensing that tournament to them. Oh, right, right, right. For a long time. It's a defunct company now, so I can't even remember what it was. But if you want to know more about that, go and watch the Smash Brothers documentary that's on YouTube. It's like four or so hours, and they discuss it in there. Yeah. Also, I will link that because that, that is an incredible documentary, by the way. Yeah, I remember you uh, recommending that before. Well, yeah, it's how I found out about the greatest math player of all time, Ken. And yes. he was absolutely incredible. <laughs> it's also where I... <laughs> it's also where I heard the story. It's literally the first thing that you see in the documentary. It's so funny. It's like... Uh, the cameraman goes to this house with this guy. And all he's right. like, yeah, I'm like one of the best... Uh, I'm really good at Smash. I think I'm like, oh, incredible. No. And then they introduce this person. Uh-huh. And he, and he is legit, like, one of the greatest Smash Melee players of all time. 
Oh my but God. don't even tell the other person. Oh, right? Oh, no. And the other person's throwing shade. It's like, yeah, I'll beat you any day. I'll beat you any day. Gave oh, him a four no. stock advantage and still wiped the floor with him. Oh, my gosh. See? <laughs> so <don't> brag. Funny. <laughs> yeah. It's really funny, though. The delivery oh, of it, I can never get better than that. It's so good. No, that's too funny. Um, uh, yeah, uh, so event. Uh, this is to do with event hubs from Sencho. Said they were better. They were better writers when when they copied and pasted articles like back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> that is true as well. They used to do oh, that. Dear. Yeah, because they they used to be basically essentially an aggregator for yeah. fighting game news. So they would often not copy stories from Shuriken. Right, right. Back when Shuriken was actually available. Ah, yes. R.I.P. S.R.K. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, he then put corporate ball sports. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, Nana's just put, put Panda is in the mud. Uh, then Sencho decided to put moist ball sports. <laughs> Thanks, Sencho. Great input. Uh, yeah, so um, Nana then put I forgot about that dumbass Nairo. I was so glad you clarified that because if you're going to talk, talk smack about technicals. Oh, goodness. Look, he has his own problems, but at least he's doing something. There you go. Um, I guess Smash as a whole is in the mud as well. It absolutely is. And he says, "Poor, also poor Sakurai. I'm glad he's just retired and Aww. talking about games. Yeah. I didn't God, even think of what, that. Yeah, yeah look at what, what his baby's become. Yeah. Oh. P place full of perverts and pedos and rapists and weirdos. Oh, gosh. Thanks. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I don't care. I I really don't care anymore. Most of them are. Yeah, no, I mean, you're right. On record. You're right. I mean, the fact is, is Zero was is it one of the big, biggest Smash 4 players was 16 or fucking 14-year-old, yeah. you know. I remember and that. And admitted it. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then Nana just put, also, Jesus, Pete, that must have been F to find out afterwards. Oh yeah, that made me never want to attend a Smash tournament ever again. And I mean that, I will never go to an in-person Smash event again. That is wild. Ever again. Well, at this rate, yeah. Be yeah, terrible. well, I'm not going to anyway. And that's the end of the comments. Ta-da! I'm so tired. I could see uh, you were fading very I heavily fading. as I took the uh, I took the the heavy lifting off you. Then. Yeah, I was, I was fading there at the at the end, but I did well. I hung in there. Um, you did. I'll give you that. But I think we'll wrap up the show so we can talk a little bit over on Twitchy Twitch. Um, yeah, but Twitch TV slash Rapid Freeze. Yes, thank y'all. Um, so I want to no, I don't want to do that yet. Um, Pete. Yes. This has been a really great show. I forgot how to transition to this. Where can they find you on the internet? Wow, that was so see. good that uh, it was seamless. I would have <laughs> never have known. I sleep uh, now. Of course, you can find me on the internet on Twitter, and I'm not going to say the usual thing because I don't think it's going anywhere anymore. Yeah, I don't either. No. So, uh, you can find me on Twitter, as always, at Pete Beckett one which is spelled B-E-C-K-E-W-T, -E and the number one. Also, please check out uh, the Never Watchers podcast. We just released Moon Knight this week, and we've already got flack about it, so good Woo! stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Kylie, what about you? Where can I find you out on the land of the interwebs? Um, let's see. I'm a few places. I am still hanging there on Twitter. I'm just, just brain crapping all over the place. Uh, that's a beautiful visual. What even mean? I don't know. I'm tired. I'm just brain crapping. Yeah. Just like stream of consciousness stuff. Whatever mm. tickles my fancy. Um, <coughs> so I'm over at Kylie to greet. Kylie, why do you use your UD? Uh, but I have more interesting things. If you're a visual person over on Instagram. Which is at Kylie Yellick. Um, for all things keto and CrossFit. <laughs> um, oh, that's a good combination to me. It is. It's a wonderful combination. Let me just have a look. I am Oh, yes, I did add the Instagram link to the service. Oh, okay. Um, I did that last week. Woohoo! Um, um, oh, I 
think that's going to do it for us. That is going to do us. I'm so tired. But we thank you so much for joining us. As you do every week, you are the life's blood of this podcast. And mm -hmm. we owe you our lives. Loyalty. Death of gratitude. Death of gratitude. There you go. <laughs> yep. Kylie's not with it anymore. No. Nope. We lost Kylie along the way. It's true. So <laughs> that's going to do it for us. And we will see you and talk to you next week. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> that ends the podcast portion of our that, show. That's a podcast. That's a podcast. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, if you wanted to, you could probably call it the Pete Ranty cast. Uh huh. To go on a bit of a tirade there. With you the did, last one. but that's okay. Um, okay, I feel passionate. I was gonna about say it, like you're passionate Halo. about it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so Halo, Halo. Wow, Pete, I just called you Halo. I'm tired. Halo. <laughs> so, hey though. So Pete, uh, actually, I need to talk to Pete about that. Wait up. Um, I forgot. I'm not gonna be here next week. What? I'm going to. Will there be a show next week, or just skip to the cottage? I'm going to Dublin. Oh yes, you did say yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yup, yup, yup. So there's no show next week then? There's no show next week. Oh, sweet. Well, that gives me another week. There you go. Let's sort out the Yeah, because that's going to be a big episode. So that actually times quite well. No, actually, uh, that's probably for the best, if yeah. I'm honest. Exactly. So, for once, I'm not going to chew you out for not being there. <laughs> Woohoo! But. <laughs> but we will still, still do our usual uh, midweek shizniz. Well, I'll try to. This week is super busy for me because I have a Christmas party on Friday. Yeah, I have. My it's one of the, first it's one, of those one weeks. in three years. Did one by any chance? Yes, of course. Cool. I'm sure you'll have a great time. Um, I hope so. I haven't been, like I said, uh, during the Halloween party, I haven't been around that many people in years. And so mm. that one was tough. But I couldn't drink. This one I can drink at. All right. So who knows what mischief I'm going to get up to. <laughs> mm. <laughs> All the mischief. Um, All of them, hopefully. They used to have a pool table there, but I don't think they do now. Um, or billiards or whatever the crap y'all call it. Uh, we call it pool. Okay. I love pool. Ball billiards is a completely different game. Yeah, the balls are the wrong color. <laughs> Balls. <laughs> What is with uh, you balls today? <laughs> I'm lonely. <laughs> um, uh, she's gone. She's done. I she's am. over. <laughs> I, I need to go dye my hair, but I don't think I'm going to. It's like okay, 9 o'clock at night. Dye my hair. It's 9 o'clock at night. Oh my gosh. Um. <laughs> oh no. Brent, I'm not going through. Huh? Oh my god. Yeah, like, Brit, read that. I know, I'm going, I'm getting to it, I'm getting to it. Um, Nana put at the end of the show, it said, Kylie, don't worry, there's no good way to transition out of that. <laughs> Which is very true. <laughs> also, something, something, hopefully Kylie will be streaming Goat Simulator 2 yeah. free at some point. Yes. And he put, that sure was a podcast. <laughs> That's a podcast. Uh, that was a podcast indeed. Uh, Bren asked, "Will there be no sh uh, no show next week?" That is correct. New no show. I will post that on Twitter during the week just to remind everyone. Blame it on me because I will need to remind myself. Yes. Uh, yeah. So Brent put hi Brent. Excellent, great interaction <laughs> between the two. Um, Brent put I was accidentally given an alcoholic cocktail on the cruise instead of non alcoholic one I ordered. Oh dear, what happened? Was you yeah. drunk? Yeah. Or did you just go and swap it out and just be like, "Yeah, this is this is this is alcohol." <laughs> what are you what, doing, what mate? It? This hey. is alcohol, isn't it? Oi, oi, bruv. <laughs> bruv, bruv, bruv. Oi, what are you doing, bruv? <laughs> Fam, what's up? What, what, what's up? <laughs> is this? Ah, I love it. Oh my 
gosh. Yeah, I think we've lost it. I think so. I think so. <laughs> should we wrap up? I think we should wrap up. Although, uh, I do want to wait to hear the response. Oh, it's oh, there now. Okay. So, I realised after a, f after a few sips, I wasn't allowed to exchange as it was during a show. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow, okay. Thank goodness you were on the ship. You just so, like... who got it then? Or did you just leave it there? Oof. Leaving just alcohol like that, it's just... Something Kylie won't appreciate. No, not at all. <laughs> I, go I don't around, like wastage anyway. I would go around to every table and just be like, okay, are you going to finish that? <laughs> you just said I left it on the oh, table. Oh no, a travesty. Oh. That poor table got drink poured all over it for no reason. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, right, that's it. Bad jokes are coming out. I need to go. Yeah. Okay. We're so glad right. you guys joined us. But we're going to go now. <laughs> yeah, Kylie barely hanging on by a thread at the moment, so thanks everyone. Bye! We appreciate y'all.